Hello. So up until this point, we've just been using point data on the object to drive something else. So in other words, each point position here, uh, each point position here also has a value on the color map and on the normal and that type of thing. But what we need to do, well, I don't need to, <coughs> what we are going to do is use another mesh to read the data on this mesh. And the other mesh won't have the same amount of points. By the way, I forgot to say, this is sponsored by Autodesk, uh, this um, tutorial thing. I don't like to call them tutorials because they are, but they're, because I, I only sort of half know what I'm learning as I go. So it's sort of learn tutorial. That's not a thing. Um, right. Okay, let's start. So let's make a new poly mesh. And I'll hide the original one. So this one here is going to have a completely different amount of points. That one there had, uh, let's have a look. 80 by 80. So this one here, I'll make 90 by 90. So in other words, oops, the points, oops, <coughs> the points won't correspond to the other ones. Um, so if you look there, and then there, well, it's shown wireframe, just, I know you trust what I'm saying, but <laughs> um, just wanted to prove that they're different. Okay, so we've got that one and that one, they're different. Okay, let's go, so go back onto shaded. And um, so I'm gonna have this one. No, hang on. This one, read data from this one. And, um, you know, the usual push to former thing going on. Let's get rid of that Bifrost graph. <clears throat> and start a new one. So Bifrost graph, uh, create graph. I want to bring in that one and that one. So one, sh sphere shape one is the one with the color map. Sphere shape two is has no color map. Get rid of that. So we're going to get this push deformer. Push. And we're going to basically, hang on, wait a minute. What are we on? This is the one we want to do stuff to. And that's the one we want to read. So we're going to do mesh in. And then set point position, set point position, and uh, on that mesh, and do out. So that's gonna. Oh, why is that not doing anything? Oh, because our multi we haven't got a value for multiply yet. Set for, so val create value node, and oh, we don't want that to be a vector. We want that to be a scalar. So. Change that to float. I say f f scalar, they call it float here. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, so we can do that to make the thing push as per usual, but we're going to use, remember, this is on the one which doesn't have the map. So, we want to read the map from this one and use those values to push this one. So, in order to do that, we can use a node called get closest location. And what that will do is it will read the closest location on the other mesh, as the name suggests. So get closest locations and um, put that into there. No, we don't want to do that. We want to read this geometry because that's the one with the stuff on but we want to read it from the positions of this one. So we get point position like that and plug that into there. And then what this closest location node does is for each thing that's going into here in each position, it's gonna read the closest location and return what's called a location and that's just a spot on the object of the other one. And we can get any type of data out of that. 
that exists on the object like this to basically any bits of this so if I add that watch point uh, it won't work because it's not connected let's do it on this one it's the same stuff oops everything's going wrong add watch point um, <clears throat> so we could read any of this stuff which exists on the object okay to do to choose what data we read from it we do get sample no we don't okay it's got sample in it somewhere so I'll just type sample <laughs> sample property I think yeah so the location goes in there we're sampling the property on this object and we are going to find the we type in what property we're going to get which is not point position it's whatever this was hold on oh <coughs> so it's on this object not that one let me just plug that in for the moment and um do a watch point here. This isn't going to work, is it? Because that's broken. <clears throat> okay. It was called color map. Now oh, let's just have a look and see what it was. So that object, let's just hide this one because that's annoying. That one there has a property on it called whatever this color map is. So let's find that first of all. Um, right, polymodeling. Where is it? Why can't <laughs> oh no. It's all going wrong. Why can't I see it up here? Because I'm in the weird mode. Rendering mode. How do I get into that? Okay, alright. Alright. Mesh display. Colour set editor. Paul's map. Okay, alright, okay. So sample property property. And it, the property is called no Paul's map. Paul's map. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and we have to tell it what type of uh, it is, which is this default. So we do value types is a float four because the if you remember from the last video that map is an RGBA. So it's got four values and that's why we need to tell it that we're getting a float four out of it. If I change that to float three by accident, it doesn't seem to mind. <laughs> it should do because it's wrong. Okay, well let's do float four anyway. All right, then out of here, we can get um, uh, float four to we need to um, vector to scalar yeah so this is what I did last time I got that and so that coming out of there is our RGBA which we're getting from the closest locations of that so again we specified that we want Paul's map and that we're getting, getting a um, float for coming out of that and um, that I can plug into the multiplier, so on the X, and did that work? Yes. Oh, yeah, sorry, it did. I've hidden that one, but on the Biff object. Because remember, this Biff object is what we make. Cool. So this Biff object is made from, let's get rid of that watch point thing because it's. Biff object is made from sphere shape two, so it's not got the same point amount as sphere shape one. Sphere shape one is the one with the, um, you know, the thingy on, the um, color map, and so we're reading it from an object which is completely different. If I just unhide that, different point count, and then we're making the Biff object from that, which is you know. What's happening there? So again, if I change that one over to B, we'll get that. 
and um, I also just need to update point normals. Update normals. Update mesh normals, sorry. No, 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 no. Update, oh, just normals. <laughs> okay, where is it? There, okay, good. That's, that's what we want. So hopefully that'll make it look a bit better, yeah. Okay, so I'm hoping that makes sense. That's basically a way of swapping data from one object to another, which is completely different um, type. So if I move this around, you'll see that, that it's updating, it's changing this one here based on how close it is to the other one. You'll see that's changing as I move this around. So it's, yeah, it's getting the closest position and then out of that closest, uh, sorry, getting the closest location and then out of that location, we're sampling whatever property we want and, um, and then using that property as usual to drive stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll leave it there because I'll keep these little bite size. How long have we been going? Oh, they're getting shorter. Never mind. Uh, I won't fill the time with any other waffle. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Cheerio. Bye bye.